head and tail recursion. And this class has a main method that calls the recursive method tail and then calls the recursive method head. Passes the string blizzard to each. So here are both of our recursive methods, tail and head. They both have the same terminating condition. If the length of the string is zero, it returns. Um, and then the last, the other two lines of code are the same. They're just in different orders for tail recursion. We first print the first character. Um, so I'd rather do this differently. Let's stick to the AP subset here. Char at isn't like one of our standard methods. Um, so we print the first character of the string, and then we make the recursive call with the rest of the string. And so in one case, we print the character first and then recurse. In the other case, we recurse, and only after it returns do we print the character. And so I'm going to set a breakpoint at the start of each of these methods so we can run this and get a sense of what it looks like. Yes. And that, so the fact is they will print in absolute orders, and that is the difference between head and tail recursion. So if I step through here, we have the string blizzard. In the, head, in the tail recursive place, which we're looking at first, we're going to print the first character, which should be the letter B. And sure enough, if I bring up the terminal, here's the letter B. And then, And then if I keep stepping, we're going to make the recursive call. So here's our second call to tail. Now the string is lizard. We're going to print the L. And sure enough, there's the L. And then we'll make the recursive call. Now we're three deep. We have izzard. We'll print the I. There's the I. And so on and so forth. And we'll keep recursing and keep printing. And by the time we get to the end... String is almost empty. There it is. We're going to return. So we've stacked, we have got quite a stack here of recursive calls for all those different letters. And we have already printed the entire string blizzard before we've returned from any of them. So now if we start to return, you can see the call stack getting shorter as we unwind the call stack. Um, and then let's look at head. So in head here, um, we're going to check the terminating condition. Same string blizzard. We're going to make the recursive call first with the rest of the string. So we haven't printed anything yet. We're first going to make the recursive call and pass in lizard. And then we'll make the recursive call with izzard and zard and the other zard and ard and everything else. And only after we get to the empty string and we return... As we unwind this call stack, do we start to actually print the first character? But the first character we're printing is the first character in this recursive method here when the string is just D, not the first character of the original message or method when it was B. So we're going to print the letter D first and then return. And if we look at the output, sure enough, there's the D. And if we keep stepping, We'll print the letter R, and so on and so forth. So as we unwind this call stack, eventually we printed Blizzard backwards. D-R-A-Z-Z-I-L-B. And so again, this is just, just sharing this as another example of head and tail recursion, um, where you can actually step through it in the debugger, which is helpful, and see how simply the order in which these two lines are arranged that is whether we make the recursive call at the head here or at the tail here um, can have a significant impact on how the algorithm behaves in terms of which way it runs.